Hey, hey, hello everyone. So I'm Sylvia um, and wait, I need to share my screen here. Um, so the whole entire AR stuff is only half as fun over stream, but I hope you can join me and have fun with this. So um, my talk is called More Experience with WebXR because last time uh, it was called Experience with WebXR. Um, so it's kind of the follow up to the last one. Um, who's me? I'm a software engineer. Um, I, uh, I work here at Surreal. Uh, as joined actually the day I gave the last talk. So Surreal does um, the most accurate um 3d copies of whatever object you send us in so we do 3d models which are absolutely exactly like the original ones uh, which means uh, i have a lot of digital objects access access to a lot of digital objects and we had to find a way to show them to our clients while there was a lockdown so that's where um these demos i show you today actually come from um, some of them are not, some things I show you today are not public because of copyright reasons. Um, so if you have any idea how to protect um, files on the web before to get downloaded, please tell me. I'm still looking for a for solution. Um, the old ones I gave in February, the, old, uh, the, the demos from them, they are still online on webxrcelia.ch. And I think the red cube in front of the viaduct is still there if you remember that. So last time I, uh, the topics last time were uh, how to, the web VR standard moved into WebXR standard. I showed you um, all the uh, demos of ARGS and A-Frame. I, I introduced you to Model Viewer uh, by Google. I'll show that again today. Then we had the geolocation web AR, where I placed red cubes across Zurich. And I showed you the first example of uh, using 3D objects uh, and AR in e-commerce. Uh, that was uh, done by Shop uh, Shopify. Uh, meanwhile, uh, there are more uh, e stores and companies that actually go in that direction. So this time I will talk a bit more about 3D objects on the web, um, the GLDF standard. I'll show you how I did the X-ray shield on multi-texture objects. I gave you a, about uh, an AR app I wrote and something new with Model Viewer. And as we all sit at home and have a computer in front of us, I thought we could do a nice code along. So where are we now? Um, it's actually getting better in terms of the WebEx standard on uh, in the browsers. Last time it was just Chrome, now it's a bit more. Uh, especially on, on Chrome, they are really pushing this. Uh, Firefox is a bit behind, but we'll get there. So it's actually even more greener than last time I showed this. So um, when you want to share 3D objects on a web, they had to figure out a new standard, uh, which is kind of GLTF standard. GLTF turns out to be something like the MP3 of uh, uh, yeah, of, of the 3D models. Wait, this is, so uh, you can go find it on GitHub or in the, in the organization that does it is uh, called Kronos. So it's uh, here on Kronos.org. You can find everything you need to know about GLDF. Um, so maybe just have a look what it actually is. So. They have uh, a couple of sample models online on GitHub. And when you look into this uh, here in GLTF, you can see that it's a, actually quite a amount of files. So you have uh, this was called here default normal, the metal roughness and so on, the textures and maps. And uh, they define the different kind of uh, different layers uh, where uh, how to to find it, the, the look of the surface. Um, for example, the normals, I can, I can open one. The normal map um, kind of defines the structure of the whole thing.
Um, yes. So, and what else is here is there's a, there's a, a binary file that encodes all the, the vertices and, and uh, basically the structure of the, of, the, of the entire thing. And then what's really interesting is the GLDF file. So when we look at it, then uh, we have it here. This is basically a JSON file that encodes the entire thing. So you include just this file and then it pulls the rest. So we have your buffers here, it defines um, how in the background the all this, um, how, how, how the vertices and all that looks, how, how the files are actually encoded. Here's in C, for example, this is type vector three, so it is a, a vector. Um, yeah, basically, it shows the mesh of the whole thing because you know, um, uh, a 3D object, there's a lot of is constructed of having kind of a mesh with lines of, of, of triangles, and over that, you put the entire texture things. So, this is here encoded. Um, and then you see here, for example, here we had the normal, so it shows. Uh, points to the other files and it pulls the file in here. And then you go down and the materials basically describe how, how these uh, files then are applied. So, and this is just um, here you see the textures, like this decide which texture goes where. So this is how basically how a sample file of GLDF looks like. You can actually even do even more with animation and everything you can put in there. So that's about the standard one. But uh, what is even more easier is just to to have the GLB file. The GLB does uh, encrypt all the textures in itself, and so you just need to include one file, and that's it. So. And I'm downloading this now because we need it later. So when I had done this, um, I was, uh, we, we tried something else because what we actually use is X-ray. So we thought it would be nice to have a demonstration of X-ray on, uh, on an object. So this is a, a Bolex camera. So it's an antique camera. Uh, this is one of our twins. Uh, it looks really exactly perfect like the original one. But what's actually really more interesting is um, you can see the inside. And what I did here is uh, so you, see, you can you can see all the lenses and everything. So this is quite a complicated model. Uh, to uh, just encrypt in GLB, um, and so you see all these different uh, surfaces, and uh, they also have a lot of different um, textures. So you see on the side, there's plastic, there's leather, there's metal, and so when I uh, tried this out, I uh, just thought, all right, I can put on just a glow shader and it's done. So that way it was super easy. But the other way around, totally back, was actually quite hard. Um, so what I had to do is um, I used 3GS. Uh, 3GS is a is a uh, well, framework for WebGL. There are a couple of them, but the SwitchJS is one of the most most famous. And so when you look at it, um, at first you need to initialize. So you set up the cameras, uh, you load the object, you you put on lights so it looks nice and all that, and then you send it to the renderer. This is basically what this code does. What then, um, this is where the action actually happens. So I loaded the GLDF object here. And uh, it turns out that the glass on it needed a bit more transparency, so I actually could access the mesh of it and tell, okay, if there is a glass uh, glass texture coming along, because what it actually does, I realized that 
it always loads it the same way. So when I suggest texture come around, make it a bit more transparent. So it's actually really easy to, to if you get a bit how, how GLDF works, it's really easy to, to grab the different um, parts of it and actually do something with it. So I loaded it here. And what you see is I put it into an array um, because when I re returned, so I, 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 I later I apply a shader and when I go through, I have to I have to loop through every uh, mesh, and, and every and and then uh, so applying the shader. But going back was a bit of difficult because I had different textures about six at a time. So I, that's why I put them into uh, an array. And each time, and when I return back to normal, uh, I have to go through the array and take them from the array because I don't load it again the way it was loaded the first time. So that's how. Uh, this really cool X-ray started. So as I had figured that out, um, we thought, okay, it would be actually cool to have uh, have an app with where you can do X-ray inside the app with with more than just one object. And so I was a little bit on the lookout and tried different things, uh, especially I had different more requirements. And uh, so I ended up using um, using uh, a company so it's, uh, called 8Wall. They have a lot of this uh, AR stuff on the web already figured out last year. So um, when you, it gives a bit of a head start for, for developing uh, AR apps on the web. They do a lot of uh, machine learning too, so uh, it was actually cool. But it's uh, it's a paid thing, uh, so it's open source. Um, but I can show you if it works what I actually did, and I have to go to screencast. Um, so I hope you see this. So here it loads one of the models. This is a chair, which I can move around. I can make it larger and smaller. I can turn it. And here's the X-ray. I can show you again the camera. And it's a bit a while because uh, a file size of, of a GLTF file, of which we have here, is around 8 to 10 megs in good quality. So it takes usually a while to download. Um, and I disactivated preload because it, it did uh, destroy some other things. So here's the camera again. So I can walk around. Our microphone is not so long like my cable here. And then I can put here the x-ray again. And then I can actually make a picture of it and save it later. So this is what uh, I could build uh, in within about a week or so with the uh, tools of 8Wall. So how is it behind? Um, it's basically give us uh, it's it's uh, an A-frame project. Is there we with a modified A-frame package? So you know A-frame is uh, the a framework for doing AR on the web on, on VR, and you give them uh, you pull up a couple of their magic into it, and then uh, we're lots of JavaScript, uh, a bit of CSS. And then I had to do a bit of trickery and do different containers. So these buttons are all uh, containers overlaid on on the web, uh, on the whole thing because it's basically a website what you see. And then on the right side, the code on the right side is the actual um, scene. So I overlay the buttons over the scene, 
and uh, access it with JavaScript. And then I pull all the, these uh, components in. And uh, uh, yes, and, and I need slides and everything and, uh, and just swap out the model uh, again with JavaScript. That's basically how I did it. Um, and then I did uh, something else because last time I showed you uh, the model viewer. And so here's just was one picture, but what I actually ended up doing was uh, building an entire gallery. So this is some of our models. Uh, this is the model viewer. Model viewer is itself a component, and I just put a component in and swap it out with a with a uh, with a with a slider. So, for example, our sushi. Uh, yes, or the chair you've seen before. So it loads them down, puts them in here, and I just swap out the the, the viewer itself. So that was uh, this is technology for, of about. May, um, since uh, there has something changed. Um, if you go to modelviewer.com, they actually, with the current uh, Chrome, they put in DOM overlay in, in, in AR. So I still haven't figured out yet how it works, but they, uh, you can actually do now the slider inside. And what's also really cool is, um, You can go on uh, on this page and open it with your phone. Do the usual view in your space like last time uh, we did the horse. And now model viewer does does web first and not not going down to seeing, seeing viewer as he did. So you can actually have the entire slider now inside inside your. Uh, inside your web AR application, which is pretty cool. So I think you can try that for yourself at home. Um, but uh, there's even something that is even cooler. And um, that's the editor. So you actually don't need even to code anymore to use uh, AR. So when you're going here to modelviewer.dev slash editor, then just go there and and uh, drag your model in. This is the one I downloaded before. And then you can see what you want. You can check out if you want change a bit of the lighting. You could put uh, an HDR and bigger ground. You can put on the light a bit more. You can tune a bit on the shadows. And what's also really cool is you can add hotspots. So like here and call it front. Add another one. And um, so we have these hotspots where you can you can actually do posters. Posters are like preload screens. And uh, see what what's here, what they have, and textures. Um, maybe change a bit of metallic factors. You and even change the way how the camera looks. But then, and that's really cool, is it generates your a lot of code. So if we copy the snippet and go over to Glitch, um, which is a, is a website that uh, yeah, you can do, drop your code. Whoa, it wants, it wants for me. It wants to see hills. So. 
and my address is here, um, polyester six choke. So you can actually go in here and remove the classic code. Add that in here. Then we can go back to see. Take here the script to import it. So, and then we still we need our assets. We set them in here. Copy the right path. So I played around with environment, but we don't need that here. Instead, we add the AR tag. And now we should be able to look at this in a new window. And there is this. So we go there and, and see, open it on a browser. So you actually, you can do it right now. It's a poly, uh, poly, S the minus six um joke dot dot me Go on screencast. So we have it here. And when you click on show in my space, no hope demo effect is not working. Well, doesn't load. But well, luckily, I, I did it before. So, um, Do it again. So that's happens when you want to demo demo and it doesn't work. But you had I had another demo before. Um not this one, the other one. So that's one I did this morning to test, but it's basically the same. So, and then you have your AR app basically done in two minutes. And uh, yes, I hope uh, you can now 
everybody can now do AR apps just on the fly. And I hope you had a bit of fun looking at it and playing around. And yes, so I'll leave you here. And then, yes, this is basically what I had to do uh, to show this time. Um, yeah, I hope you have a lot of fun and you can try it out now yourself. So, thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sylvia. This is amazing. This is mind blowing because I remember when the Oculus Rift development kit 2 came out and you had to run a very specific version of Chromium that came from a Google Drive or like an even more obscure version, test version of Firefox to get any like virtual reality on. And let's not even talk about uh, uh, augmented reality. And then like Web AR on AR Core and Web AR on AR Kit came out. Uh, this is amazing. Thank you so much. This was really, really cool. And as far as I can tell, the people who are commenting on the chat uh, are also really, really happy. Uh, and I think like the only glitch might have been, I'm not sure if I saw this correctly, but I think when you loaded the AR version, uh, like the first demo that you wanted to mm -hmm. do with the, I think that was the non-HTTPS version. I think then it might have blocked the asset or something. So Could have been, yeah, yeah. Yes. But it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's like amazing. You just basically drag this asset in, and then you get the code out, and then you put it in Glitch, and then bam, you have an AR app. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really, really cool. <laughs> OK, Sylvia, thank you so, so much. Uh, if you want to join the, the after party chat, that would be cool. If not, that's also yeah. perfectly fine. Um, and uh, yeah, fantastic. I'm just, wow. <laughs> Thanks, thanks so much. And uh, it has been fantastic to have you here again. And I think we are all mind blown at this point. Um, and looking forward to see what you're doing next, because you are definitely on a path of a trailblazer here. And that's, that has been really cool. Thanks yeah. so, so much. Thanks. Yeah, right. cool. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. In that case, thank you very much for, for joining us.